students who are going to revise the Mother's Day. And uh, as you all know, this play, it is a satire. What is a satire? Satire is, a, you know, a device, you can say, a literary device in which you use humor and irony to highlight any social issue. So this play, it is a satire on the status of the mother in a family, right? So it is there through humor, and uh, yes, through depicting very typical situations, this uh, play, it highlights that uh, what is the role of the mother and how she is treated. Now, in this play, we have the two main characters are Mrs. Fitzgerald and Mrs. Pearson. They are both contrasting personality. Mrs. Pearson is someone who's very humble and uh, timid and she's very concerned about her family and we have on the other hand Mrs. Fitzgerald who is her neighbor she's a very dominant bold lady and she has noticed that how Mrs. Pearson's family treats her and wants uh, Mrs. Pearson to be strict with her family to deal with her family in a way that will teach them discipline will also make them respect her. Now, Mrs. Pearson is too, as we said, that she's too timid to do a certain thing. So Mrs. Fitzgerald decides to take over for her. And she says that, see, I know a way in which I can handle this situation, which is a very out of the way situation. That it's not a quite possible, you know. That is, she uses magic. And she has learned this magic when she was there in the East with her husband. And uh, in the beginning of the play, we see her going through the cards also and trying to tell the fortune of uh, the future of Mrs. Pearson. So she is there and she suggests that they should both exchange their personalities. And uh, yes, so she casts the spell, she says the magic spell. And what does she do? There's an interchange of the personalities, there's exchange. Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald. Now Mrs. Pearson is very bold and Mrs. Fitzgerald is kind, timid and polite. And uh, now Mrs. Fitzgerald as Mrs. Pearson, she goes into the Pearson family home. She's very different and uh, how she's behaving, you know, how she's quite uh, rude and bold and uh, when her children they come back from their work they are in for a big shock. Doris and Cyril are the two children. Doris is the daughter, Cyril is the son. Both of them yes they are pampered, they are spoiled and they take their mother for granted. They never help her with any work. In fact they think that when they come back from work are uh, things that should be ready for us. And so they, uh, you know, like don't help or they don't cooperate with mother at all. Now, when uh, Doris comes back from her work, and yes, what is the favorite excuse? What is it that everybody has to say? That is, we have been working and we've done our eight hours at work. And uh, so they not expect you to help at home. And they don't realize that the mother works 24 hours or rather seven days a week, 365 days a year without taking any day off, without taking any break. So she, uh, like Doris, when she comes back, she wants her dress to be ironed. And first of all, she's there, she wants a tea. She's come back from office tired and hungry and she wants something to eat. But to her shock, uh, Mrs. Pearson has not got anything ready. I've had my tea and if you want to have yours, you can have it. And uh, Mrs. Pearson is very rude and she has never spoken very rudely with her children. She's never been strict with them. And so they are quite shocked. But what is, uh, like she is quite shocked. But why is she talking like this? She says, I want you to iron my yellow dress for me because I have to go out in the evening. And Mrs. Pearson very bluntly replies that, yes, it's not going to iron itself. You will have to do the ironing. And uh, like, uh, Doris is in tears and at that time Cyril comes. Cyril is the son. He is also spoiled and pampered uh, and uh, he's also there at entering home. He also wants his tea and uh, he, he's also ready to go out after some time again. 
and he wants to know whether his uh, clothes that uh, they have been mended because uh, his mother had promised him in the morning that she'll do the mending and repairing if there's things to be done. Right? Uh, so she's uh, not done anything, and both the children are very surprised at what has happened to her. Then they notice that she's smoking, she's been playing cards, and she is drinking. So she never does that. And she's talking very rudely and uh, to the children, right? So they are they think that maybe she fell down, she hit her head, and that is why she's behaving like this. So her behavior has changed, and maybe she's uh, lost her memory, and uh, so she's uh, talking very rudely to her children, right? So they are uh, very shocked, and uh, Doris is in tears, and because. Uh, Doris is in tears, Cyril is even more annoyed and he says, let's see how you've made her cry, how you're talking to her, how you're behaving with her. So he's uh, like uh, not happy with the whole situation, right? Then what happens is that like uh, Mrs. Pearson, as Mrs. Fitzgerald, she tells him that you work for eight hours. After that, you are at home and you expect that even at home, everybody is going to do the, your work for you. Like I'm here, right? And she says, at uh, your office, if you don't want to do anything, you have a body, you have the union whom you can go to talk to, whom you ask to represent yourself. But uh, I, I don't have anybody who's going to speak up for me. I have to speak up for myself. And I've decided that like you all, I have uh, had my tea. I don't want to make any for you. And uh, yes, I have also decided that if you people get a weekend off, even I need the weekend off. So why should I also have to work? In fact, weekends are more demanding when the whole family is at home. There is more work to be done on the weekends, isn't it? Right. So she says that, no, I am also not going to work and I'm going to relax. And uh, yes, so here is that uh, she refuses and she says that just like you, I've also joined the union. I have decided that even I'm not going to work. So Doris is a little worried because she is there quite, uh, you know, surprised. She's never been spoken so rudely to by her mother before. And uh, she's saying that, okay, not even on weekends, you won't do anything. But then Mrs. Pearson, she softens a little bit. She says, yeah, but if you are a little, yeah, if you are a little polite to me and you request me again and again, maybe I might do it, right? I might do the, <coughs> sorry, work for you all. Now they both are right. Uh, Cyril gets a little naughty. He's enjoying the moment. Okay, now let's see if she's going to behave like this when father comes back home. So George Pearson, he's also like that. He is a very, uh, you know, like proud person and uh, very, uh, what uh, you can say, uh, selfish and uh, thinking about himself only. And uh, so he thinks that uh, he is there, like getting a lot of respect at home, at work, at other places that he goes. And uh, so Doris and Cyril now they're thinking what is going to happen to father when they find that, see, this is the way mother is behaving. So when Mr. Pearson, his sister George Pearson comes home, then uh, yes, so he also gets the same treatment. He has, does not have tea ready for him. And even though, you know, like when he comes in, he says that, uh, I hope you haven't made tea for me because I am going out, right? So it would have been a waste if you had made. And Mrs. Pearson says, I never got anything ready for you. Now he is surprised that you haven't got tea made for me. What if I wanted it? But she says, you don't need, want it. And so there's a little clash over there. And she says that uh, you try this in a club or in a restaurant, that you enter there. And uh, even though you don't want to have uh, something, you're very surprised that no one has served you already. So this is a situation at home also. So it's a good thing I did not make for you all. Otherwise, it would have been such a waste. You people are going to eat out and uh, you are uh, the food here, which I would have prepared for you, would have been wasted, right? So he, uh, still students are joining. Okay. And uh, Mr. Pearson is very surprised. And uh, then he says, and uh, what have you like if you got not got my tea ready? And she says, I might not even make dinner. I might go out somewhere today. And they're very surprised because mother has never, ever gone out anywhere on her own. She, they have uh, seen her at home taking care of them and uh, looking after the family. 
and in spite of you know being taken for granted and sometimes yes being spoken rudely to and even then she is there doing the work for her family so they're very surprised when she says that she might go out later and then mrs pearson tells george that see like the way you're behaving here at home you try to behave like that at the club and then you'll find out how they're really going to take care of you how they're going to be rude to you how they make a fun of you behind your back so he's very sh shocked and very surprised mr pearson so he asks his son to confirm it and yes so cyril also says the same that yeah like they do call you on the pompey pearson they make fun of you and uh, like this is how the people at the club they behave now mr pearson is very shocked and he was ready to go out but then he decides against it and uh, in the meantime while all this confusion is going on mrs pearson uh, rather as uh, mrs fitzgerald enters the house and uh, there's a lot of confusion about uh, you know the way they talk to her and she wants to come inside and see what is happening in her family but uh, as it is uh, the pearson family is in a very disturbed state so they don't want their neighbor to come at that time to disturb them to talk to them to you know like be with them and uh, mrs pearson is very uh, surprised uh, and uh, what is happening okay and she says i should have known and uh, she addresses uh, him uh, you know like uh, as uh, mr pearson and uh, she calls uh, cyril also and uh, they are very rude to her and uh, mrs pearson was mrs fisher tells him that you have to at least be polite you should say good evening good afternoon something and ask her, her to come inside and be polite with her so he, she is quite annoyed with the behavior of her family and then mrs pearson takes mrs fisher out and she says i i i don't think so i want my family to be hurt any more to be you know disturbed more so she has decided to that let us exchange the personalities and exchanging the personalities back was much easier than casting the spell in the first place so both of them have got their bodies back or they back into their own original personalities now when uh, mrs pearson in her original self when she enters the house everybody is there quite uh, worried and they look at her as if how is she going to behave and what is she going to say but what is it that she wants she says that see i want that you should spend time with me also instead of just coming back from home and going out again in the morning you go out and you just coming home and going out so that is your routine i want you to spend time with me right and she says that once in a while yeah, i'd like it if i could have a game of cards with the family and maybe yes the children could cook a meal once in a while so little things that she wants which will make her feel happy also will make her feel you know like yes that she also has a position in the family right and yes so the you can say the family is very eager and they just want mom to be happy they don't want her to be so you know what uh, strict uh, and loud and insulting as she had been throughout the day and so things do get back to normal and mrs fitzgerald gives mrs pearson a warning that don't get soft on them don't be polite with them otherwise what is going to happen that uh, once again these people will start taking you for granted and they might uh, you know like behave with you in an improper way like they have been doing so please be strict once in a while now this is the play it is about a typical family and maybe the situation it does happen in the families right that we do take mother for granted we expect her to be there taking care of us and we uh, are there so busy with our life it's so busy with our routine we just forget that we also have to be there for her right and uh, she is she also needs rest she needs a break from her routine but nobody understands that right and uh, so here it is uh, through this situation through typical family situation or maybe an exaggerated situation that has been shown it is one aspect of society has been depicted so there is humor also that is some situations are quite funny about george being called ompy pompy pearson when mrs pearson tells cyril right what she uh, 
thinks of him and Doris when she tells him that I'm not iron, uh, her, sorry, I'm not ironing your dress, what she thinks about her friend, right? So through these situations, some real truths have been revealed. And uh, the, what the problem that has been highlighted is the status of the mother. So it is not just one day in a year or maybe in a week that we have to, we have to appreciate. And each and every family member is important. And see if one person is upset, see if mother is not cooperating, what is going to happen with the family? How it gets off track? how the routine is disturbed, how we will not be happy. And uh, yes, if we are there, you know, like uh, hurting others or just taking too much of advantage, then also it is not a nice situation. So we have to be cooperative. We have to understand that the family, it works as a unit. Each one has something to contribute. So Mother's Day, yes, so it is one day where mother takes control. And in contrast to the fact, the way we celebrate Mother's Day, that is one day we give her lots of love, lots of recognition, give her a big thanks, and then rest of three, six, 64 days, we just forget, right? Here in this play, this is Mother's Day, when mother takes over the house, when mother shows that I am an important member of the family, when she is there telling the family members, this is what you are supposed to do, and this is what I think about your life, and this is what I think about you. Although it is not a mother exactly speaking, but there is someone who's speaking these words for her, right? Trying to put things in order. And yes, here we have a very important social issue addressed through this play. So the characters very well defined, uh, very uh, clearly presented. So Mrs. Pearson, Mrs. Fitzgerald, Doris, Cyril, George Pearson. These are the characters. And uh, yes, how they're pampered, how they're spoiled, and how they want, uh, you know, they understand their needs, they understand the things that they want, things uh, should be comfortable at the workplace, but they don't understand that even at home, there is someone who's there working throughout the day, making your life comfortable, making your house comfortable, making sure that you have everything you need. So yes, it's a very important chapter here, and a very important message. Any doubts? Any questions? Anybody? Any doubts? Any questions you have? Anyone? No? It's okay. So when I ask you the questions today, then I'll come to know how well you have understood. Right. Okay. And uh, yes, so let me just go through the poem also quickly. It is a revision for you all. So where is the poem? There it is. Yes, this is the poem that I'm going to give you a test on today and uh, it will not be a multiple choice question test. So it will be a subjective test. So please write the answers neatly and clearly. Write your name on the page also, your class section roll number. And you can send me even as an image or as a PDF. Whatever way you feel you are comfortable, but make sure you send it today. Right. Now here, what does this poem talk about? It talks about the concept of what, although the title is childhood, but by bringing to our notice some qualities that we develop as we grow, the poet highlights the loss of these qualities in us. Right? And, uh, you know, like, uh, or rather, yes, uh, we lose our childhood and innocence. And along the way, we become mature, we become wiser, we become more understanding, we start noticing things around us. And thereby, it seems as if layer upon layer, you know, like we get experience, we get more knowledge, we get uh, more observant and what happens to our childhood it seems it gets buried under all these uh, qualities that we have but deep inside of us there is a child which uh, makes us you know like yeah enjoy the little things in life which you would hold back as a mature adult oh no I can't do this but yes so there are little moments you know as uh, that uh, child in you comes uh, awake and you want to feel happy and you want to be, you know, like uh, very happy in that moment, enjoy the beauty of nature, have a loud laugh, 
not care what people are thinking about you, right? And these are the qualities which we have as an innocent child. So, right, the understanding, the wonders, the worries of life that comes much later. Now he asks again and again the poet, when did my childhood go? And this question has been asked, it's a refrain which has been used, right? And uh, he wants to know when a particular time, and he's trying to pinpoint a particular time in his life that when did that happen? When did he lose his childhood? And according to us and according to the poet also, childhood is an age of innocence, of least worries and care, no bothers, no worries. But as we grow older, all these things, they start happening. So he's saying, when did my childhood? Is there a particular age in our life? That yes, we have here, you know, like we divided our lives, right? So infant, and we talk about teenagers and adolescents, adults here, we talk, right? And then old age and senior citizens, we categorize ourselves as we grow up and grow older. So he's saying, when did my childhood go? Is there a specific age? that uh, I am now uh, 10 years or 11 years or 12 years of age, and now I'll no longer be a child, right? So he says, yes, was it when I was 12 years old? I ceased to be 11, I became 12. So what, when I, was it when I, then I lost my childhood? But remember, you know, like, I, I think so I've discussed this earlier, our environment, our surroundings, our setting, it really matters a lot about our childhood. Some people, they become mature early because of the situations they have to face, because of the problems they have to face, and uh, because they have been uh, exposed to the realities of life, exposed to the hardships of life. But some people are there, they have been sheltered and protected that no worry, no problem should be there for you. And even that is also wrong. So these people, they remain innocent. Not even innocent, I would say they remain unaware of the true face of life, what life is about. So he says, was it when I became 12 years old and then I became, uh, what, I lost my childhood? And then, yes, yeah, so as we grow up, we have heard many fairy tales. We heard about the, so many things happening in life. Magic happens and all this happens here. But uh, he says that I realize that all the places that I have been told about, and most importantly, hell and heaven that I've been told about, it does not exist anywhere. I could not find it in my uh, atlas. I did not study about it in the geography class. So I, I, it is not there. So was it then? And so he's trying to pinpoint that point in time the timeline of his life is trying to pinpoint it. when did I lose my childhood, right? And then next he says that, was it the time I realized that adults were not all they seemed to be? So we, we look up towards our parents, the elders in our family, the people we come across, but when we realize, you know, that their behavior, you know, they are really good in front of us, they tell us all these big lectures, the big talks, but in reality, they are entirely different. So when you realize that people are hypocrites and, you know, right, so people are not what they are. They're different. So this is also one moment of growing up. They talk about being kind and helping and sharing, but no, they don't do that. Isn't it? Right? So yes, so that could be a point in his life, a time in his life when he lost his child. Then he says that when I realized it, when, when I found my mind was really mine, to use whichever way I choose, producing thoughts that were not those of other people, but my own and mine alone. That when I when I realized that my thoughts, I, I could think independently. I could think for myself. I could judge between what is right and wrong. Was it the day when I lost my childhood? Right, so little phases are also 
and you are there you know when you become responsible and you are uh, accept responsibility you accept the truths of life is it you're no longer a child isn't it sometimes what happens even this uh, you know we uh, i discussed earlier also how this very difficult situation that we have been in and there have been so many losses and so much of suffering and we have been exposed to, to so many bitter realities of life and that is a growing up phase for us and when it would have been you should have been there with your friends enjoying the, and uh, you know yes uh, laughing and growing with them but you have been experiencing a very different phase of life this is unprecedented isn't it right so it has also resulted that in many of us growing much before our time right so little children maybe if they understand okay i have to join my classes and they logging in themselves and they are there attending the classes that is a sense of responsibility realizing i have to listen on my own i have to do this on my own not dependent on my parents that is also there now where did my childhood go the child is always within us did not go anywhere we just change because what the time requires it isn't it the situation requires it but within us the child is always there and when you want to see that innocence when you want to see the childhood we look at an infant's face and just wonder at the innocence of the child and love that cuteness that innocence on the child's face so we are always there this the child is within us okay right so hoping that you all did get some kind of uh, information or you got a little bit of uh, learning for your test today